Good afternoon. Today this is... meeting is being transcribed. <laughs> this meeting is being recorded. Okay, we are all set. Good afternoon, everyone. Today is Monday, June the 12th. This is the regularly scheduled Tennessee Athletic Commission board meeting, um, commission meeting. My name is Roxana Agamusio, and I will uh, get us started first of all by doing a quick roll call vote to assure that we have quorum. If I could, uh, if you could just say here when I read your name, we'll make sure to proceed um, making sure that we've got quorum first. Uh, Dr. Christy Halbert? Here. Ben Grove? Here. Dan McRue? Here. Patrick Wren? Here. And uh, Matt Reddish is not here with us today, but we have a uh, quorum in order to proceed, and it is exactly two in the afternoon. Um, first, I would like to take a minute uh, to introduce my boss, our assistant commissioner, Alex Martin, who's joined us. Alex, welcome. Hey, thanks, Roxana. Great, great to be here. If I could just make a, a few brief comments. Uh, uh, great to meet a couple of you in person that hadn't had the opportunity uh, to meet before. So uh, just a little bit about way of background for, for me. So uh, I've been with the department for a little over two years, uh, but before that, uh, served in the governor's office working on on appointments to uh, boards and commissions just like this one so uh, always uh, ha had a special place uh, in my heart for folks who uh, take time out of their out of their day to uh, to serve and uh, just appreciate everything that y'all do and and your leadership so happy to be here and and feel free to direct any questions to me thank you so much alex uh, and next, along the introduction line, I would like to introduce our new attorney, Jesse Gentry, sitting right here. He has taken over Pam Spicer's position. She's still with the state, moved on to the attorney general's office. So we are very blessed. Jesse has taken off running, and welcome. Thank you. Um, next, uh, notice of this meeting was uh, posted to the commission's website since June of 2022. The notice of this particular agenda and this meeting date and time was added to the website on June 7th. The next item on your agenda would be to approve the agenda as presented. All of our commission members were sent the agenda and redacted legal report as well as the minutes in advance of the meeting. If there are any changes, I welcome those. Otherwise, I would need a motion to accept the agenda as it's presented. I'll make that motion. We have a motion. Do we have a second? Thank you. Motion by Dr. Christie and second by Patrick Wren. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you. The agenda is accepted as presented. Uh, next would be accepting our March minutes. Uh, those start on page two of your iPads. If there are any changes or corrections, please let me know. Otherwise, we would need to motion accepting those on the record. I, I have a correction. I believe it's yes. just a typo. Yes. On, uh, I want to say, it looks like page three, election of officers. I believe uh, we just, we twice have in there um, Dan McGrew. And I believe, okay. so I believe what we were looking for was vice, pro, uh, vice chair. That's there. missed. Yeah. Thank you. I'm glad you caught that very much. Any other corrections? If there are none, uh, but I'll give you a minute to review those just to make sure that we have missed anything else.
are no other changes to the March minutes, we would need a motion and a second to accept these with the amendment uh, that Dr. Halber presented. I'll make the motion. And I'll second it. I Ben. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? No. Thank you. On your iPads on page seven is our uh, most recent um, budget or financial report. This report shows us uh, still with a negative deficit. Unfortunately, we are at um, 39,873 as a total. I'm sorry. Uh, we're at a total deficit of 68,761. And um, we will probably end the fiscal year with a little bit over 70,000. Those final numbers for June will be presented at your September meeting, hopefully, to be able to look at that. And I know we've discussed um, some options that we're working on and changes. So um, this is just an informational piece. If you have any questions, feel free to let me know or always reach out to me in between the meetings. I'm happy to go over anything. I do have a, a question. So I'm. it, it looks like field enforcement is continues to be one of our largest expenditures and I'm wondering if we have any large events on the horizon that might help offset you do and I appreciate that question because we've talked about the larger ones help us immensely there UFC is coming they've set their date for August 5th so that was my good news toward the end of the meeting but I'm glad we talked about that that'll be a, a good thing they've already gotten the promoter license and are moving along with everything so that will definitely help us for the next fiscal year we didn't end this year or by the end of June we won't have one that's big enough to, to really help but as we mentioned at the last meeting we're making different changes to try to cut back some of those costs as well so uh, I think at the last meeting there was some mention of June 30. Did, did that did not happen. Event fall yeah, through? that was moved. It's been moved to July, but it's moved a couple of times. So um, hopefully it will take place. It would be a decent size. Uh, UFC, of course, as you know, is very organized and has already set the date. So hopefully between the one that could happen in July and then uh, UFC in August will be in, in good shape. And was that are the both were both of those scheduled for Nashville or which cities? Uh, both are Nashville. Yes, Middle Tennessee. Yes. Now, did we not have, uh, it was one of the promoters that was here the last meeting. Um, Matt Young. Matt Young, mm -hmm. yes, was uh, talking about a uh, an event. It, he was having a TV event. It did not happen. So okay. hopefully it will in July. Yeah. Um, the next item that I have before turning it over to um, the legal report is the meeting schedule dates for 2024. This is on page eight. And what I'll do after the meeting is make sure to email everybody these dates where we book these ahead of time to make sure we have the room and that it works with your schedules. If you could take a look at those, they of course are the afternoon at 2 p.m. and always the, the same Monday as we do now. Uh, we would need to approve these to go ahead and put them on the website and start booking the rooms, but I'll make sure to e email everybody these dates. And, and you probably got them with the first email, but that one has a lot of stuff, so I'll send them back out. Do you, do you need a motion? I do for the minute. I'll, yes. I'll make that motion to accept. Thank you. I second. Uh, Christy, a second from Dan, is that correct? Yes. I wasn't looking up. Thank you. All those in favor of accepting our 2024 meeting dates, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you. Um, I will go ahead and turn it over to Jesse for the legal report, and that starts on page nine on your iPads. All right. Good afternoon. Uh, so we only have a few cases on this legal report. The first case is complaint number 202301 uh, Are there any questions or discussion that you would like to have on this complaint? We approve these as a package, correct? Is that how you would like to do that? I can read them all into the record if you would like to do it that way. Completely up to you. Sometimes a few, we've had a few cases that needed a little bit more and you've, you've separated them. I know that everyone has gotten the legal report. If you prefer asking um, Jesse to elaborate on any, you have questions, we could approve all four together. Well, uh, ideally, I think if you could go through them one by one uh, in case we have questions, but then I, I believe we typically just vote on and them. Yeah. Okay. Unless you're amending it. All right. Thank you. Yeah. 
And I'll read uh, case number two, number two, which is two zero two three zero zero six nine two one. I was wondering, uh, is this professional boxing, kickboxing, or MMA? Uh, this was boxing. Thank you. Longer, so I wasn't sure if there was any other questions on number two. Otherwise, I'll read number three. Number three is complete. Number two zero two three zero two four four nine one. Number four is two zero two three zero two four five zero one. Are there any questions about any of these cases or the recommendations? I just want to make sure I understand. Number four, that is the same. That's the same event as number two, correct? It is correct. Before was just opened later. And this event took place in February and the promoter has yet to turn in receipts is that correct yes four four months later and it's supposed to be done within 10 days is that correct that's correct both three and four are related to that and i believe number one i mean they're separate events i'm sorry both of them though were much longer than that 10 days case number one as well that was an event that was june of 2022 and there's still outstanding fees from from that one as well so i believe that part of the decision to open these complaints administratively one, due to the violation, but then also two, is to try to get these moving forward. Uh, as you'll see on, on three and four, those recommendations, uh, the, the penalty does lower if they go ahead and pay that in a time, timely manner, timely being subjective there, because they're already quite past that 10 day period. But uh, at the very least, hopefully it has some teeth in it to get them to come into compliance in future. If we could go back to number two, the third paragraph, the last sentence. So do we allow exhibition bouts in in our rules? Allows for exhibition bouts? Yeah. I believe that was something that we had a question about. There's nothing in the rules that I know that prohibits it. Right. Uh, and yeah, we, we, we do allow those as far as I know, yeah. Right. And part of the concern with specifically that that's why it was mentioned was because this was supposed to be a professional bout. And then due to some issues at the last minute, uh, the promoter wanted to allow these two individuals to fight. They had traveled uh, some distance and our inspector just noted that it was a little bit uh, suspect, the fact that they were on the card and then off the card and then back in the ring. But there was no evidence that they were actually competing in professional capacity that they're being paid or that there was a purse for that. Of course, there will be no um, judging. There'll be no judges around the ring right. and uh, no decisions uh, given by uh, any state personnel. Uh, and I think the all the things that they have to do, er everything is the same. The weigh-ins and everything, I think, are the same as far as if they were regular pro bout. Uh, but uh, I think that there are going to be some, uh, probably in the future, some... Um, uh, exhibitions. Uh, I think uh, I heard one promoter say a while back something about uh, having some of the YouTube people, media people or whatever, you know, boxing, whatever. And they all, I think the only thing they need is uh, what, an ID, a state ID or something like that. Uh, to ask for that ID if when you're saying a state ID, you mean like a driver's license? Or right, something, something like, like that. Okay. I think that that would be potential health required because they wouldn't have to have the professional license for that. Um, I know there have been discussions about ways to differentiate it better because especially in this instance, um, 
when I spoke to the inspector, typically the exhibition matches, uh, you know, they're not trying to go for a knockout and there's some differences uh, with timing of typically how these rounds are done. And he did note that it felt like it was more of a, and it could have been due to the frustration, I suppose, of the fighters, but there did seem to be more of an intent going for type knockout type of uh, blows in that match. So just, just for clarification, a professional promoter can put on exhibition bouts and those combatants would not be required to be licensed? I don't believe we would, I would have to look into that further, but that I don't believe they would have to because it's not a professional match at that point. Mm -hmm. As far as I know, no, they don't have to be licensed. It's really a glorified sparring session, pretty much. Yeah, I just want to be clear that the USA Boxing rules do not allow for exhibition bouts on professional cards. And, that's and, and they wouldn't be on the card. They're actually not on the bout sheet that we make, right? So there's that, yeah, there's that work around. that was part of the, the <laughs> issue, too, is they were removed from that kind of last yeah. minute. Now, uh, there's one other thing as far as that goes. Um, as I understand, hearing some of the promoters maybe talk about those type of exhibition bouts of having a type of a round robin type of uh, boxing to where you may have four individuals do like a round apiece or and, and able to. Yeah. So is this similar to to that league? That you're, are you talking about reference or are you referencing that league that no. there, there's something happening in Georgia, I think, and, I, and maybe New York where there, there are th maybe three pairings and each one only boxes one round or something like that. I don't, I don't uh, know all the details. I don't know about any league, but I think that uh, it was going to work similarly to like the amateurs where we have the, uh, the boxing day where you have people coming in and out of the ring, you box maybe a couple rounds and then take the place of someone else and they box a couple rounds, something similar to that. So they, in other words, they want to sell tickets to like a sparring, professional sparring uh, session? And what I understand is going to be sort of like a glorified sparring session. Do our rules allow for that? If it would, our rules would not be applicable in some of those situations. So our rules would not really be, they wouldn't disallow that is a better way to put it. But we have received, we did have a, a question about something similar to, I think, to what you were describing. Um, round robin wasn't the term used, but I think it was. Redneck. Well, that was another term that was used, but uh, it, it was like a similar tournament style setup that we've received questions on. I think those are all the questions I have. Well, on, on these um, recommendations, I mean, are there still are still some that have not been rectified? Is that what you were, were talking about on the legal report here? Yes. On Which numbers, ones? Well, one, three, and four. One, three, or four so have not been. On number one, uh, they still owe um, $168. Um, and then on three and four, they have not paid the uh, receipts tax. How long do they get to uh, to pay these fines? Well, on, at least on three and four, uh, we're going to give them, and this is, you know, the recommendation would be to give them 30 days to uh, pay the receipts form or receipts tax, I mean, and, and submit that form. Um, and if they do, then they could, instead of paying $500, pay $250. But it's been past 30 days. Well, I'm sorry, 30 days from once we would send them notice to say, you have 30 days to pay this. If you don't, you owe $500. And at that point, if they don't pay it after that, we would just have to send them to an administrative hearing. And we'd go before administrative law judge, subject to penalty, much higher than that, less costs as well. So that would be uh, 30 days from today. Essentially, uh, typically when we send those out, it's 30 days from when we send it. So if I'm able to send it today, it would be 30 days from today or, or likely 30 days from tomorrow. Okay. Uh, hopefully a way to get them to, to pay these, pay the, the 
fee that is, is outstanding, but then also understand that you're being charged an additional penalty at this point because you haven't paid this within 10 days as required. And then certainly if something happened in the future, if this happens at another event and we're a month, two months uh, after that, then maybe we can look at something higher and, and keep escalating from there. Um, but this is, uh, these types of issues, you know, the staff does contact these individuals and the staff spends time, you know, kind of really encouraging them to pay it, asking them to pay it. And if they don't pay it, that's just continued staff time that's used for something that most people who are abiding by the laws and the rules are doing so, but then you have a few who just, for whatever reasons, haven't done so. To uh, vote on these individually, or, or we're going to do it? Uh, if you don't have together. any changes, I think you can vote on them together if you are going to uh, accept all four recommendations. But if there were any that needed to be changed, uh, I think that those would be better to do it individually then. So you can make a motion to approve all four or uh, a motion to amend one or two or three or four. All four. I don't know of any, uh, unless some of the other commissioners uh, think there's a need to change any one of them, but uh, I'll make a motion that we uh, accept the recommendation of all four. Thank you. We have a motion by Dan McGrew to accept all four as uh, presented on the legal report and follow legal counsel's recommendation. Do we have a second? Second that. And a second by Ben. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, the legal report is accepted. Um, thank you very much, Commission members. I don't have anything else under new business. I was going to bring up um, the, the date that we have with UFC. I really appreciate the conversation with the gross receipt tax. Uh, Jesse really did explain it. We follow up. Obviously, before the events approved, they have the report itself, and the thought is that they probably just owe the minimum, which is the 500, but of course, we have no idea because we don't have the report either. So I appreciate the commission's support on that. Um, any other questions or business that the commission has? Do we have an update on the bare knuckle boxing? Yes, as we, um, I think at the last minute mentioned, we have the uh, conference in Vegas. Alex Martin is going to attend, and so is Jesse. So they'll be able to there hear the unified uh, rules that are being presented so that when we draft ours, they follow in line with that. And at that time, so for the September meeting, that's what we will be presenting along with any other rules that we work on in, in the pipeline that we discussed also. In Great. Yeah, I just couldn't remember. Get it. <laughs> So hopefully the next meeting you'll have a draft. I'll make sure that um, it's emailed to you before the meeting to give you a chance to look at what's what's in there. Thank you. We have nothing else. I'll entertain a motion to adjourn if everyone is done, but this is I've got us at 2.22. We have a motion by Ben to adjourn. Could I have a second? I second. Um, all those in favor to adjourn, please say aye. Aye. Uh, any opposed? None. Thank you so much for your time. And um, we took care of everything that needed to be handled today. I appreciate it. Thank you.